Good morning. My name is Patrick Schultz. I'm the pastor here at St. Mark's and St. James. And what a, what a joy it is to be here with you this morning for our Young at Heart time. I want to share a story with you. It's a story you might be familiar with. Uh, it's one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss. It's called The Sneetches. The Sneetches. And it begins like this. Begins like this. That's there we go. We have two snitches, one here and one here. What's the difference between the two? Can you see the difference? Now the star belly snitches had bellies with stars. The plain belly snitches had none upon thars. <laughs> Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small that you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneeches on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and snort will have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met someone when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly ch children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? No, not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. So here we see them roasting their frankfurters, their, their hot dogs. What a great way to eat hot dogs. I love that. Yes. And here's the, the uh, plain belly sneeches. They have no stars. They're left out in the dark of the beaches. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping along on the beach, or alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey. McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need. And my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Here is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. He looks like a character to me. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for three dollars each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they climbed inside. Then the big machine roared and it clunked and it bonked. And it jerked and it burked and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. Plain belly sneeches popped out. They had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Look at that. Stars on their bellies. And they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned, if which kind is what, or the other way around. Then up came McBean with a very sly wink. And he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. 
So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true, but come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you, again, the best niches on beaches, and it will co all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. He's got them coming in, going in the in, coming out the out. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like sneetches who have them on thars. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air they paraded about, and they opened their beaks and let out a shout. We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneetches are sneetches without. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. And then, of course, from then on, as you probably guessed, things really got into a horrible mess. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. They're going around and around and in and out and in. and Oh, it's just a big... Big old mess, isn't it? All the rest of that day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneetches, off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machines they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money. They kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when the very last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up, and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. He never will learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong, I'm happy to say, that the Sneetches got really quite smart that day. The day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches, and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneetches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. Look at this. So we have little Sneetches. One star, no star. Big sneetches, one star, no star. Holding hands, smiling at each other. Those stars don't really matter, do they? That day all the sneetches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. Those stars really don't matter, do they? doesn't matter how they look on the outside. It's what's on the inside that really matters. I have some questions for you. I wonder if you can answer these. Let's see, how can we see them here? Uh, there we go. The first question, how did the star-bellied sneeches treat those with no stars? My next question, number two, how did the plain belly sneetches feel? How does it feel to be treated differently? Number three, who came to help the sneetches get stars and remove stars? Was McBean really helping the sneetches? And why? What did McBean really want? McMonkey McBean? What happened when all the sneetches continued to go in and out of that machine? What did the sneetches learn and how did they change? That's something that's important. How did they change? What can we learn from the story of the sneetches? I want to invite you to answer those questions. As many of them as you, as you wish, as you're able to. If you can send those to me, with your name on them, 
Maybe your mom and dad, mom or dad could take a picture of your answers and email them to me. And I want to invite you to draw a picture or take a picture of a snitch with a star or without a star. But instead of a snitch's head, which you can see in the story in the pictures, I want you to put your head. <laughs> How does that look? Do I look like a snitch? Yeah, maybe. But I have a star on my belly. That's okay. Can you draw a picture of a snitch with your face smiling and send it to me? We have a place on our website that I can put that up and we can, we can look and see your work. All right. Let's have a prayer, my friends. Gracious Lord, we know that you have created us all in your image. You have made us all like you. It doesn't matter what we look like on the outside. It's what's on the inside that matters. Help us to remember that, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I will see you next week.